Uh, I'm here with Eric Schoenfeld, who is the co-editor of uh, TechCrunch, the biggest tech blog in the world, and one of the most linked to blogs anywhere in the blogosphere, to find out uh, how do you become the most linked to blog? What is the key to running a good blog? You have to uh, show up every day, every hour now, and uh, post often, and you have to post things that are new uh, and that other people find of interest. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, the blogging world has become a lot more competitive in the last year especially, uh, and it's really hard to differentiate yourself. And the only way to do that is to either be first with breaking news or to have a point of view that uh, takes the story one step further or brings a level of analysis that other people uh, find interesting or that makes sense of the world. Sort of a conceptual scoop conceptual or think of it more like an, an opinion piece. It, it, blogging for me personally is, is sort of a, a combination of, of opinion and reporting uh, from a journalistic point of view. Obviously there's lots of different styles of blogging. Lots how, of how would you contrast it to your previous work at Fortune uh, Business 2.0? How is it very, di what, what is the biggest difference? The biggest difference is I don't get any sleep <laughs> now. You know I used to work at a monthly magazine where I would have weeks to prepare a story that would run 4,000 or more words and uh, it was very well rounded and I got, I interviewed 50 people and uh, I had the complete story. I tried to have the definitive tale. With blogging it's a different thing. It's one thought at a time. It's, uh, you know, this is one event that happened uh, and I'm going to blog a post. It's a, it's a three paragraph post and then when, when the story evolves I'll do another post about it. And, the, and the, there's no, the idea of a story is not complete. A post is not a complete story. It uh, is a series of posts that build upon each other. And uh, it, it's not just building on upon, upon each other, but you put out a post and that, that draws in readers. And some of those readers are actually sources and they know more about that topic than you do. And you learn more about it either through comments or they contact you. And then you, the reporting sort of continues and you just keep on following it until you get the truth. And the truth is this evolution uh, rather than something that you try to find out and package all together and then present to the audience. In, in this so, case, you're, so you're sort of feeding snack food. You're not, you're not giving somebody a full four course meal. You're giving snack food and then... I wouldn't call it snack food because, uh, you know, this is these are nutrients this is very these are nutritious morsels that uh, <laughs> it's not junk food it's here. not junk food <laughs> uh, it's just a different way of of reporting and and getting a story uh, and I think it's something that, that a lot of people don't understand and, and even our readers sometimes uh, they take us to task because they feel like we should be as authoritative as say the Wall Street Journal which sometimes we try to be but sometimes Sometimes we just have an opinion and we just want to get it out there or sometimes we just have a rumor that we think is pretty pretty good and uh, and we feel like it's worth talking about, right? The the barrier for posting is, is it worth talking about? Is it an idea that's worth discussing? It could be true, it could be not true. We'll make it clear how confident we are in the veracity of it, but uh, to it, it's a different animal, and I, we're still sort of experimenting with it. So, so you, and you're contrasting this with, with the format you worked in before, which is magazines. Is this blogging style of journalism uh, incompatible? Could you bring out the TechCrunch magazine, for example? You could do a magazine uh, that would be a, a, a magazine that had a lot of different small little stories. So if you think about a magazine, the front section is always, you know, the little news bites. Uh, and you think about uh, a lot of fashion magazines and magazines that don't actually have any stories. Yeah, you could create one of those magazines. Could you create a, a magazine that had long features uh, based on a blog? That would be a little bit harder. It would be it wouldn't be features. It would be it would be little news morsels and long opinion pieces. And that might be an interesting magazine, but. By the, time it, by the time it arrived in your mailbox, it would be dated. Since what you're talking about is contrasting the big piece that is done where you're reporting, you're talking to many people, getting many points of views, uh, with, you, with the blogging, you're not. It's basically riffing off of the knowledge you have, you're bringing in. That's not exactly true. You do get many points of view. It's just when you get those points of view is different. I don't necessarily have to collect the 50 interviews before I write. I might talk to five people, get enough to write something, and then 
in the comments, in the 100 comments, maybe I'll get another 20 people who I should have interviewed. They're CEOs, they're people that you would necessarily, they're authorities, right? And they add their piece to, uh, to, the, to, to the post. And sometimes I read those comments and I create a whole new post based on them. So it's a different, it's a different way of thinking. But your point of view is much more important than it was in writing a magazine piece. Your what you're bringing into it. Right. With a magazine piece, you could be writing about something you knew nothing about, but you're calling all of these experts ahead of time. That's right. So does blo blogging requires a, a specialization in that sense? Yes. You, you, know, you need you need to go in with that knowledge. You can't be a general assignment blogger. That's true, but I do do general reporting. I mean, we cover the technology space, which TechCrunch covers, with everything from startups to Yahoo and everyone else and uh, so it's hard to be a specialist in, in that area you do have to sort of be a generalist in technology and a lot of times you know I don't necessarily know everything about uh, you know cloud computing companies sometimes I've got to learn about those guys uh, but for the most part my strengths are in, in the areas where I know a lot about and that's where I'm, I'm really opine. Excellent thank you very much. Thanks for having me.